All right, hello. Continuing with the OS dev here. Of course, we're going to start out with just some minor changes since the last one, but today my docket for this hour or so is going to try to be doing seek. The rest of the seek call, I ended the last video just laying out some enum values for wince, for seek set, current, and end. So I'll try to lay out some basic thing there for a syscall and try to, uh, what I added here actually, <laughs> maybe a little very, very basic test sort of runner, <laughs> which just says, hey, pass in function pointers and we'll run the functions. And if they return a Boolean true, we'll say the test worked. If they don't, we'll say it's false. So that still relies on, you know, manual work for test functions. But anyway, I want to try to get to seek. And before we do that, I'll just go ahead and try to explain the new things here, if I remember, which I probably don't. It's a virtual memory manager, so I'm doing stuff with that somewhere down here. Oh yeah, clean the file table entry. So close as of yet uh, did not, <laughs> uh, what did it not do? It didn't recover the memory that was used for allocation in open. So if we have a new file in open, when, and we go all the way down here and we add it to the file table entry, that's all well and good, but we want to allocate at least one page by default if it's a brand new file, or else we want to allocate the size of the file in pages effectively. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm calling map page. Now that underlying that in the virtual memory manager, it maps in a physical block of memory from the physical memory manager, and that uses memory. So if we don't unmap it or we don't free the pages that were mapped, we have a memory leak. So that is what I did. That was a very basic thing that I forgot, but you know, that's all right. Um, the other thing I added to close was an error on invalid file descriptor. So if we pass in a negative, it's not good, but I was going to do zero, like less than or equal, but I suppose if we say we want to close standard in later for some reason, I guess we want to allow that since zero, one, and two file descriptors are going to be standard in, out, and error later on. So I'll just say, hey, you passed in a negative for some reason. Maybe something happened and it errored. We want to error on that. So that should handle that. Result will be negative one, so it should return negative one and say, that's not good. Okay, other than that, yeah, we want to clear the entry. I did move a couple lines for mem setting the things down in this new if, this condition. So if we decrement the ref counts in the file table and the inode table, so the underlying file, and we find for this file table entry, we don't have any more references, we do want to clear that out. However, when we clear out that entry, I also want to free the memory that may have been allocated from open. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm getting the size in pages, which for me is the same as a, a disk block. They're both 4K, 4096. So I'm just saying however many bytes the file takes up, which is contained in the inode data for that file, I'm converting that to blocks or disk blocks. And that's the same as a page size. So I could also make a function for bytes to pages, which would be the same thing. But that's the size in pages that this file is taking up in memory. Um, if it's a new file and it's empty or there's no data in it, we're going to say it's one page by default because I do allocate one page by default here. The same thing here, just copied that. So however many pages we have, I was allocating to a specific address in the file table entry. So I'm just setting the start of that address here, just getting a another you know reference to that. And while we still have allocated pages, I want to deallocate or free that memory that was allocated for the file. So I'm calling free page and I'm calling get page. And these I haven't looked at in a while, but these are functions within the memory manager, the virtual memory manager. So get page just gets the current page directory and the page table from that and the page in that page table. That's all that's doing, going through the uh, arrays memory there. And free page on the, on the right here, <laughs> frees a page of memory. So I get the right address for the page that we want to free. And the page is a pointer that we get in free page here or in get page here. So whatever virtual address our current 4K block of memory, our current page of memory is at, I'm going to free that page that was previously allocated by open. So I'm just getting an address to that. And I'm freeing the block, the physical memory RAM block from the physical memory manager at that address. I'm just freeing one block of memory for one page at that address. So I could make better functions later to do multiple at a time. Right now I don't have that. And after a page is freed, from physical memory, I'm clearing the present attribute. So if we try to use that virtual address again without it being mapped to another 
physical address, it will not be present in the um, in the page tables. So the memory management unit or whatever will give a page fault at that point. So that's good or not good, depending on what you're doing. So I'm just freeing that. And if we free a page, we have one less page to free. So I subtract, it'll start at one by default. So it'll go through and do it at least once. And then the next page that was allocated would be at the address plus the size of a page, which is 4K. So I just add that here. Page size is effectively 4K. And we just keep freeing at the next 4K aligned address until we have no more pages. Um, no more pages left allocated, they're all freed. So after that, we do want to clear the file table entry, but before I do that, I have to reference the inode within that file table entry. So since we reduce the reference count here, if that reference count is zero, we can then clear that inode table entry because it's no longer in use. And then we can clear the file table entry, which has all that other info, including that. Okay, <laughs> bit of a mouthful. And then we do the normal, you know, success, return zero, that's fine. So that's all I changed there. It's not that much, but as always, it's a little bit of a mouthful trying to explain. And the only reason I don't need this include really in this file since this syscalls.h is included within the kernel during compiling. I just put that there so I know where my free and get page functions are coming from. Uh, although I did read, I think, some article by Rob Pike, which said uh, you shouldn't really include files in your headers. You shouldn't include files and in files that are already being included. You should just put like a note that says these files should be included in whatever ultimate file this is being linked with. So I might go towards that in the future. I'm not sure. Because this does add extra compilation looking through everything multiple times, even though I have pragma once or, you know, if not defined, defined, that kind of stuff. Not sure on the performance aspects of that, so I won't try to speak like I know the thing. Um, but that's all I have for new stuff. Right, okay. So we'll get to do, get to work on a, on seek. I'll try to do that. So that will be in syscalls as well, although I can... Yeah, I did add it to the, the wrapper functions, right? I don't remember. <laughs> I should remember things eventually. Okay, I didn't add it to this. I did add to the syscall numbers file, I believe, but not this file, so that's all right. So seek a file, which will be updating its uh, offset in the open file table. That's effectively what we'll be doing here. It'll be seek. So what did I have without my face? What did I have here? Seek, It'll return an int. I suppose on error we can return negative one or so. FD offset and wince. Okay. So we'll have seek, not l seek. We'll have a file descriptor that we're seeking. We'll have an offset that we're seeking as well. And we'll have a wince value, which will be wince, wince values is what I called it. So wince values wince, it's kind of awkward. I could call it wince value t. This is an enum. There's not really a good way unless I do like e underscore or something to differentiate, but it doesn't really matter. I don't think it'll evaluate to an int regardless. But let's just see, called it wince values. Let me call it wince value t, I guess, if we're doing custom types. Although this is open flags. And I just called it int flags. I mean, I could, you know, limit this by doing open flags, flags, open flag t. I guess I'll change to do that. That makes more sense in the, um, I don't know, the ultimate function the interface, the thing that we're using it with. That kind of makes more sense if I name them like that. So if that breaks something, so be it. It should evaluate to an int ultimately. Okay, these will all be constants. I will not be changing them. So what are we going to do here? I guess similar to these, we'll just have a result start at negative one. We'll get a result value. This will be syscall seek. And we'll give nb, give a file descriptor. I'll just move all these on the next line. Uh, Okay, there we go. <laughs> so A will pass the syscall number, B will do the file descriptor, C I'll pass the offset, and E DX will pass the wince value. We can use that in our syscalls. Okay. 
That looks all right. Include interrupts syscalls. Let's go up here. There we go, syscall seek. So I will have whatever we do. I guess just a result value. I'm not sure exactly. What do we have here? It's, uh, it's lseek, isn't it? But that passes an offset, which I probably should have an off T type, but I don't. So <laughs> I'm just working with ints right now. Repositions things. So does it return? What is the return value? It returns the offset location in bytes from the beginning of the file. Okay, so for my purposes, I have a file offset value within the open file table entry for a given file. So I can just return that offset file. On error, it returns negative one. Okay, that's fine. I can do that. So I can have a result here again knitted to negative one. And I'm just gonna copy something up here because I'm lazy for initializing some values. Specifically for four registers, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. So B will be the FD, yeah, C will be an offset, and D will be once. So I have to have the things here as well, that's okay. FD will have negative one, we'll have offset, and we'll have, I wonder if I can do this though. It should be an int, so that should be all right, right? I'll just set that to zero, why not? We'll set offset to zero. Okay, because they'll be overwritten by these values here anyway. All right, so what did I do wrong so far? A bunch of stuff. Unused variable, well, yeah, because I'm not using it yet. That's okay. Get this here. Return whatever result we do. Of course, I'll return the actual offset, probably, from the file. Will be result. If we get to this location and there's no errors at this point. So let's do actual offset from open file table entry for file. And that won't compile because that's not valid code, but I'll have it there for later. Result will be an EAX. Okay. So let's get the open file table entry similar to how I did in close, because that's what I remember doing. <laughs> we do want to error for invalid file descriptor. Let's do that first. And result starts at negative one, so that's okay. All right. So let's do this, I guess. Not all of this, but as far as getting the file table entry, again, it's just an offset into the array of open file table entries. So I can do that. That's all the file descriptor is. It's an offset into an array. So we'll get a pointer to that entry. If file not found, we do want an error. If it's not open, we do want an error. That's fine. I should have an error no or some other global va value that I pass around though, so I can get better error results eventually. That would be good, but I don't have it. Okay, so what do we do if we find it? We need to affect the file from the seek value, yes. So I did this and this. Okay, according to set, current, or end, or doing neither of those, although it should be limited to those with wince, but maybe it won't be, so. We'll see. So we'll have seek sets, seek currents, and seek end. Otherwise we'll have else, although what I can do is switch on that. So let's switch on the wince value. That seems the most straightforward at the moment. And I don't need to do it like that. And we'll have a default. Space that out a little bit and default will give an error just in case you can do that and see because I don't remember <laughs> if it doesn't bounce check or do these things. Limit it to the enum values. I'm not sure if it does or not. So that will definitely error at this point. We don't need to break because we'll have a return, but that's all right. I'll leave it there. So error did not pass valid wince value. All right. So seek set. What does this do? should update these names. 
All right, seek set. So we'll say set file offset to input offset or arg. The one that was passed in, what's, what's a good way of saying that? <laughs> I guess just arg, it's an argument to this function. Function arg offset, whatever. I'll find a better name later. <laughs> All right, let's do this. I might start doing this instead of the comment. I mean, the comment is highlighted with to do, but if I do this, then the file won't compile. I'm not sure what a good way of doing that is, but I'll leave that for now. So I know that'll be an error right there. Okay, so we want to set it to there. So that is the OFT. So we'll update the OFT offset to be whatever offset was passed in. That seems pretty nice. Of course, I want to make sure it can't be a negative value. That would probably be bad because that would be before the start of the file. So I do want to prevent that. Some extra error handling, that would be good. So let's say if offset is less than zero, we want to error. And we'll just do this. I'll do that again. Error cannot seek before start of file. All right, otherwise we'll set that there. Um, could put this above, yeah. I think that's all we have to do for set. <laughs> it just sets it to the thing. We don't have to worry about it being past the end of the file because write or read will have to deal with that. Seek doesn't really have to deal with that. It's fairly simple. So current will set file offset plus equal the function argument offset. So wherever the current position in the file is, we're just going to add whatever offset value was passed in. That's what seek current will do. And it can be negative, but we do want to stop at the start of the file. I believe if it is, you know, a negative value that's greater than or up to the start of the file from our current position. If we're if we're like 100 bytes into the file and they pass negative 200, I probably should stop at negative 100 and then just pass the offset back as zero when we return from the function. I think that would be good. And here, if we want to get the actual offset while I'm here, Easy enough, we can just return the actual offset. So return file offset. And we'll do that. Of course, I don't need a result here. I could just do that here. OFT offset. There we go. But then I have this result value I'm passing around. That's all right. It's whatever. Not the best program in here, just off the top of my head. Seek end will set file offset to to end of file, then add function arg offset. Okay, so seek current would take the current offset and just add offset, and I'm going to say if oft offset less than zero, we'll set it to zero. There we go. That's easy enough. That bounds check. Don't go before start of file. If it's less than zero, set it to zero. Offset can be negative, and if we add a negative number, that's the same as subtracting, that should be all right. Seek end will go to the end of the file first. So the offset will be the inode size and bytes, which will be the end of the file. The current max file position is the full size of the file in memory that we're looking at. If it's between page sizes, we could have more than this allocated at the uh, at the file table entries address. So if a, if a file is like 6,000 bytes, we'll still have two pages allocated, so we'll have 8K. But we just want to go to where the end of the file currently is if they do seek end. So this would still go to 6,000 even though we have 8K allocated. But then we'll add the offset that was passed in. An offset could be negative, which will seek backwards from the end of the file. Um, or it's positive and it goes forwards from the end of the file. In which case, another write will set a new file size by zero padding, same as sort of seek set if we set beyond the end of the file. That would also happen. But I think that's all we have to do for this, hopefully. I probably forgot something, maybe some other error handling, but that is okay. 
I suppose we could, yeah, we could do the same thing here because maybe they seek to the end of the file, but then add negative a million or some crap. So we'll, <laughs> we'll prevent that here from doing anything bad. If it's, yeah, if they do seek set negative, we can't. But if they add the offset with current or end, yeah, we'll bound it to zero. That's okay. All right, otherwise we did not pass a valid value. That would be negative, and we'll just return the offset that's actually for the file. I think that's all we have to do for seek, hopefully. I'm not sure about good test cases right now, but that should be all right. I'm gonna mark that done. C. I should like make an app, make a basic program or something that, you know, has a key bind that just marks this done. So I think basic note taking apps all have that, but that's okay. Yeah, the read will return zero, right? We'll do that, right? I might do on the next video, we'll see. So I kind of want to make, move on from this to a, a basic test runner in the kernel. I'll make a function that will combine the current open and close tests, and I want to make a function for seek. I'm not sure I want that to be laid out, but I can do that. And then just write a thing that takes pointers to those functions, puts them in an array, and I'll have like a basic name, like open, close, test, seek, test. And then I want to, I'll just write like a green OK or a red fail, depending if that function returns uh, true or false, because I'm just going to make them Boolean function pointers, which I think that's function pointer syntax, right? It's been a while. Um, and then we'll just print the number that was passed. I'll keep track of the number in total that we have and the numbers that returned, the number of functions that return a true or an okay. So that's all this is. So I figured I could do that because I made, I made that up in like, you know, 10 minutes. I was like, ah, oh, that'll be all right. It's more like 20 because, you know, this isn't, <laughs> it's not how I started it looking clean. That never happens, but that is all right. Does this compile? Oh, warning, comparison of unsigned expression. Did I make it unsigned? I guess the offset I did. That's true. So that would never happen. Okay, do I need to make the offset signed? I probably do. That is okay. Although that would suck if files are going to be greater than 2 gig in size. <laughs> because it's a signed 32-bit. We, we might push that off until later, though. It depends. Let's see, this is at the bottom here. Yes, I have a uint. I could make it a regular int. I'm not sure if off t is signed or not usually. Or I could make, um, I mean, I could cast to like an int 64, and if that's lower, then do it or something, but uh, we, we'll probably have to update this later. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> to not be so small, but oh well. I mean, that makes it compile. Shouldn't have anything here. So the reason I found out is um, that close was memory leaking is because, you know, I did this off camera. I was like, don't I usually do this? Why don't I test this? So if we do open test, currently this does not call close on the file. So it does allocate a page by default for this new file, but it doesn't, you know, release that memory. So this should be down by one block, 28514. And it is, well, it's actually down two. So that's good. <laughs> that's even better. It doesn't keep doing that right now. But if we call open test again, I don't think it makes another new file. Oh, it does. Yeah, it allocates to another file table entry. So that just keeps going down by one each time. That's not good, but close test, now that close deallocates the memory that was allocated from open, even though it makes a new file, close test.txt, it should stay the same, 28512 for the blocks we have. Yeah. So that stays the same. So it does not have a memory leak from the open call. So that's also why I kind of want to make a test function to <laughs> encapsulate open and close so that we don't have, you know, extraneous uh, bad stuff. That would be bad. Okay, so let's have, I could have a separate file that has tests or I could just put them all in the kernel at the bottom or something. It doesn't really matter. It does matter, but. I'll just put them up here. We'll say open, close, test, or test, open, close, depending on how I want to do namespacing. In C, ha, you can't do namespacing in C, dummy. That's all right, we'll just do this. 
These will be test functions. Eventually, yeah, I might move these into a different file right now. I'll just get the basic thing laid out. This will just be seek, probably. We'll do that. So instead of having these functions here, I'll have a command for running a test or multiple tests. We'll say run tests. It'll be run tests. I could do underscores for these. I know they're all one word. That doesn't really matter, but oh well. So debugging, but my keep, this will be run test functions. So instead of command open test, we'll say we're going to have run tests here. Run test functions and presents results. So we'll have an open close test file. If we open it, it'll say we created the file. If we closed it, it will not create file. Um, I want to make this in a separate function at the bottom. So let me do that in a bit. Move below logic to separate test function. Be bool test open close. Just so I don't forget that. Okay, but I'm gonna make some types here, so this doesn't necessarily have to be in this scope, but that's all right. Say we have a test function t type, it will have a name. How big the name will be, I'm not sure. We'll have it be some arbitrary size that is not likely to be hit right now. So that'll all be on the stack, not great, but that's okay. We'll have a name and we'll have a function pointer, which doesn't return anything. Doesn't take in anything, it'll return a bool. That's what I meant to say. And we'll have an array of these. So we'll say test function t tests should be an array. And I think it should automatically determine the size. I can put that in there if it gives me errors on compiling. That's all right. So let's say we have test open close. We'll say this will be open, open and close test. We'll just say we'll do that so we know there's syscalls. That'll be sort of the name that we're running that we're going to print to the user for the first one. And the function pointer for that do need to be then more curly braces. Function pointer for that should be test open close. Okay, that should be a statement because I'm setting it equal to that. Do I have issues so far? I do. Unused variable, yep. Close test undeclared, that's true. Let's just comment this out and probably remove it. Delete this. All right. Okay. So let's have another thing. I'll call it seek syscall. And test seek. That'll be there. So those are taking from these two file. What are these declarations? <laughs> Function, not file. Function declarations here. So it's taking those so it knows that those are okay for this function pointer here. So let's have num test. I'm not going to mess with this. And this will equal, we should be able to do size of tests now, right? Because it's a, an array here. But if not, we can also do, uh, what can we do? Size of tests over size of tests zero. But we should just be able to do this. Okay. So the number, that'll be the total number of tests. And I'll also have a number of tests that we're going to pass or fail. So we'll do that. And I wrote out the logic here. I don't remember what I did. So <laughs> I, was trying, I was trying to remember. 
Yeah, this did size of over zero. I don't need that. I think I can just do size of tests. I did get the foreground and background color because I'm going to print out stuff and have to reset it. That's fair. That's kind of what I did here. Print running test. That's, yeah, we could do that. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to escape first. Yeah, let me do that as well. So we'll have foreground and background. This will be user, user graphics info, foreground color, background, user graphics info, background color. So I'll reset those later. We'll have colors available. I just had eye of the num test. Okay, that makes sense. I was like, how do I have the past variable in here? I don't remember doing that. It's because I didn't do that. I just iterated through all the tests that we have. That's okay. So first of all, let's print that we're running the sucker. Let's say running test dot dot dot. We'll say we have a new line. We'll cover it with some dashes. So R U N N I N G space T E S T S dot dot dot. So that'll be enough dashes under that. And then for each one, I'm going to print the name. And then a space, and then like an OK or fail status. So the name will be whatever it is, test I dot name. That should be OK. And then we can print OK or fail. I guess we'll do an S. What did I do here? Because I did different colors. Okay, I said different colors here. Yeah, that, we can do that. So if tests i dot function, if it returns a true or false, if it's true, it'll be this. Else we'll have a false. And I'll do the error case. So instead of doing slash e, because if I switch to pedantic flag later, it'll error that. I'm going to do just the regular, the 033 or the X1V, whatever's 27, they're both 27, so it might be capital O. Usually it gives that, oh, a zero. Yeah, zero, three, three for octal, Never mind. I thought it was O because O for octal, but that's not true. Or hex one b for the escape, literal. And then my escape for changing the color of the foreground and background is FG. I don't want that to be with the X, but that may be okay. FG, BG, percent D, percent D, semicolon to end the escape sequence for my specific terminal emulation. <laughs> Quote unquote, I'm just writing and taking those in. So that will do the same background color, but the foreground color, I'll do green. I should have that defined. Yeah, I have green defined here, which is just green. This is ARGB, so ARG value and then b of zero so we should be able to do that so i'll do a green and then i'll do an okay i want to print like a new line before this i don't do it there so maybe not so we'll have this we'll go down one line we'll print a thing i could print each one on its own line that'll probably look better We'll print the test, we'll print that, we'll go down a line, we'll print the name of the test, and then we'll print if it went through or not. Yeah, that should work. So we'll do a green OK for success, we'll do a red fail for not success. And only changing the foreground color, background will be the same, this sort of dark gray. And then after that, I'll reset the colors for the next name here. Which will be, I can just copy this really. <laughs> Won't print anything there. We'll just reset to the regular foreground and background colors. Reset to, I'll just do reset colors. I was like, reset to normal, but what is normal? So, <laughs> I'll just reset default colors. And that should go through all the tests. It should print them out on their own line. So after that, we'll print out 
however much we passed. So we'll say start it on its own line. We'll say test passed or num passed. And we'll say pass, that's fine. My percent D over percent D. That should be okay. We'll end with another new line. And this will be number passed, which we do need to add up here actually if they passed. Plus equal one or plus plus. Number passed over the total, which is num tests. So that should be okay, hopefully, and then we'll continue. So this I don't need right now because we'll move that to another function. Okay, hex escape sequence out of range. So it doesn't, it thinks that's all like a hex escape sequence. Because I have an F and a G and stuff. I don't want that. Do I have to do this? <laughs> You're gonna force me to do this because that looks really dumb. You are gonna force me to do that. Okay, well, <laughs> I just want one byte. That's why I have these two things here. Do I have to do 2x? No. Do I have to do 033? Maybe I'll just do 033 if it, uh, if it takes that. Mm -hmm. Because that's 27, right? That is three times eight plus three, which is 24 plus three. Yeah, that's 27. I don't know why this counts as more than one byte. Maybe it counts as two bytes, but I don't want that. That is not what I want. What I do want is to see what works. Okay, undefined reference. That's true, because I haven't made the functions yet. Although it should have a defined reference since they are right here. But is it saying that when I call it? I can't link it in because they don't exist. Okay, that makes sense. The RO data there. All right, we'll do that at the bottom here. Probably should move into, probably should move these to a separate file <laughs> or something later, but that's all right. We'll just have our test functions here. All right, of course these will have to, yeah, we don't need anything in the, in the global space actually, Never mind. Because I should be able to call open seek read whatever down here. That'll be okay. Okay, let's go back here. I'm going to delete that. Put that there. Gonna go back. Gonna take this other stuff and go to the bottom and do that again. And go back. Just to make sure we should be okay. Separate test function did do that. All right, delete this. Uh, let's go. Just move everything back. Starting to get tired. My brain, my brain just wanted to stop. <laughs> I have been busy today, but I still had some energy and wanted to do something. So okay, but after this, I, I should be good and probably will go to bed. But that's all right. So if we open this open close test file successfully, we have created the file. That's good. Otherwise, we have an error. I will return false on any errors. That means we failed, which will not be good. At the end, if we pass everything, so do continue here, we'll return true for success. I tested open and then we'll test close. We have open close test already, don't need to do that. So we did open it. We should capture the FD value. Let's do that as well. We'll make that a constant. That will be opening the file. And then we can check this value directly here. Okay, so we don't have FD negative one, otherwise we wouldn't have opened it. We know we created it. If close is zero, we closed, else we could not close the file, return false. That should give an empty file by default. That should be all right. We don't have any data in the file, 
So we probably do need read or write to be able to test seek. So this is more of a stub, not really great. Not sure how we're gonna test that. I mean, we can test seeking a, a zero file, I guess, that's, that's all right. There just won't be anything in there. Oh, that is all right. We can do some basic tests for that. I want it to go down, not up when I did that. There we go. Add more to this when read and write are filled out. I'll do after. To be able to <laughs> actually write data to a file. But we can do some basic tests. So we'll test uh, test seeking on a new slash empty file just to have something to do. So we do need an FD here, so I will open an FD thing here. Let's do this. We'll just copy that. Let's have a new thing. We'll call it seek test. Okay, so if we have a new file, let's test current end and set, right? We should be able to do set as well, but I won't be able to test what the offset is, but since seek returns the offset, that should be okay. We can just check the, re check the return value. So I don't have like, you know, fseek or fwrite or any of those functions in standard IO right now, because I haven't made them. Otherwise you, you could be able to tell, I think like ftel or rewind or other things. You, you could be able to get the info from that, from the file struct, I think, from that pointer. I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> it could be speaking out my butt. But that's all right. So I want to seek the FD. Let's test with an offset of zero and seek set. It shouldn't really do anything since they're, the position should be zero. I don't have an assert either. I could make that. This is sort of a poor man's assert. So let's say we'll do that. We'll do the Yoda styling here. Why not? It's different <laughs> if the value equals the thing. So let's say if not equal, we'll return false. I don't really need to do these, I guess, printing out from the test, since we already know if we created it or not. I, this is where Erno or something would come into play. We can leave them here for now, that's all right. I might remove these, just so that the little test cases look better when it's being printed out, but right now that's okay. These could even go to standard error later instead of standard out or something, but I don't have those set up. Uh, okay, so if that failed, we'll return false. Let's do another thing. Let's say, let's do a hundred. Let's do, do these things as well. Print out. So right now I know where it fails if it did fail. That would be good. Let's say could not seek, could not seek set to zero. For, for this. So B could not seek set to 100. And this one will do zero because it shouldn't go past the start of a file if I do negative 100. Could not seek set to negative 100. So that's set. Let's try just a couple for current. We'll try two or three. And we'll do a couple for end as well, just to check that they work. So zero, we'll say, you can add zero, that's fine. So it shouldn't add anything. We'll try 100. It should set it to 100, because it'll add 100 to the current location. And we'll try again, negative 100, which should go to zero. Uh, seek, I wanted to search forward to one. There we go. Okay, let's do three for end as well. I'm sure this is not at all exhaustive of test cases, even for an empty file, but I just want some basic examples here. We'll have end, 
And we can do the same things for end. We could seek end to zero, seek end to 100, seek end to negative 100. So seek end to 100 should be 100. Seek end to negative for this one should be zero. Okay, that seems all right. Close test does not exist, 922. Oh, I don't need this, yeah, don't need that. I didn't even look at that. I had tunnel vision so bad, I didn't even see that. Because <laughs> uh, I copied it. That's all right. Okay, we can make that. That's good. Don't have anything here. Don't have a memory leak to start out with. So let's do run tests. Nice, we get a page fault. Wonderful. Beautiful. So open and close. We created the file, closed it, returned OK. Seek, created the file. Could not seek set to negative 100. Okay, well, I'm glad I had, you know, login there. Because <laughs> we get a big old address for a page fault. So I could not seek set to negative 100. Okay. So why is that? That is this one. And here I thought it was going to be a good, easy video where I didn't have to debug and I should know better by this point. That never happens. That's okay. I'll just go to the bottom because seek is here. So what am I doing for seek set? If the offset is less than zero, then it should return, right? It should return result. Cannot seek before start of file. Yes. Does return. Result is negative one by default. And that should go back to sys wrappers, which I did not type correctly. Sys call wrappers. Yeah, we overwrite result with a negative one. It should return negative one. I guess I did zero. Should return negative one. My bad. Did not seek set to negative 100. That should be a negative one. Maybe that fixes things. Probably doesn't. Probably still gives a page fault. Right? Yes. Could not seek current to zero. Well, that's a different one, actually. That passed that. I wonder why the zero gave a page fault, though. I guess I shouldn't worry about it. <laughs> I probably should worry about it. That was in buffer two. So could not seek current to zero. So we I, I add zero to the offset. The offset is less than zero, it's equal zero. So I add the offset to there. Seek FD zero. It should just add zero, which shouldn't do anything. And then return the offset. Maybe this doesn't work for some reason. Offset's just the uint32. That could be it. No, it's an int32. Never mind. It's an int32 now. So it should be an integer, signed integer. Should be zero. And it should get zero. What would be interesting? Is there something with FD? Is that not working? I mean, that's just an int, right? And that is a constant here, passed in bx. So that shouldn't have an effect on anything. They're all constants. They're all constants. Of course, here they're not, but these ones are overwritten with these ones. Yeah, I'm not sure what the issue would be here. I mean, if these are both named offset, but this should be spaced or scoped to that struct, so it should be okay if they're the same name. If it's less than zero, set it to zero. It's just weird. It gives an error, it returns fail, and then I get null. Oh, it returns... F okay, so it's after it returns, which is good to know after it returns. So there might not be an issue with that. There's an issue with the test runner of sorts. 
Also, I don't think it printed fail in red, but what do I know? <laughs> Probably should have done that, and it didn't. That's okay. It's unfortunate. It could be with these. I mean, this ends with a semicolon. But from terminal right, that ends this whole thing. That should be okay, I think. It printed fail, then it printed null, I guess, for these or something. Maybe these don't work for signed ints or something. I don't know. It should work. Yeah, well, I did slash E, foreground number, background number, semicolon. If it finds, if it finds an X1B, which is an escape, 033 should be the same. But if it finds that, it looks through. If it's not X or Y, not clear screen, should be foreground. I'm passing an integer here. I could pass a hex value, I guess. I am maybe used to it doing hex values. But if that's not true, we just do base equal 10. We go on till we reach the B. We get the number that was passed within the string. It just converts that to an int, adds. It moves past the B and the G, does the same for the background color. That's all it does. So it reaches a semicolon, which these all have semicolons. We reached an R. Yeah, the N would be a line feed. That's okay. If it's an R, reset X. Where we're drawing the character, we do. That's probably behind my head. Move this over here. So foreground and background color. Here and here. It's drawing the colors that were set, although it's not setting the green or the red right now. That could be. I mean, I passed a percent D. And those colors are defined as hex. So yeah, that might be the issue. That's fair. That's that's probably the issue. It's trying to do a 16 number base and a 10 number base and, and mixing them up. That's probably not going to work. That does make sense. So I should have, you know, like an H or something or an X. I don't I don't have an X right now. Because I'm not dating anyone. <laughs> no, but... Uh, we'll put it, we'll prep in those there. See if that makes it work a little bit better. And it does not. Hmm. That I'm not really sure. Stuff may be moving around from a, an optimization from the compiler or something. I, I will have to try and figure out why that is. But it does go through one test. Hey. <laughs> The other test, uh, it doesn't redraw that as green, which is um, not fun. I could see if the regular colors change regardless. Change colors. So if I change to RGB, if I just change to RGB in the background, the same one it already is, it does change to green. So I know that does work. But it doesn't do that within this function. So it could be with the color changing, it could be from some other thing. I can check right quick. Of course. And we'll just do OK. Not worry about those right now. Rule it out. Okay, it's not to do with the colors that don't work anyway. It is a different address, though, which is interesting. It could be with printing, with mallocking and stuff within printf. Could be an issue in there. And also, probably this, the reset, because I didn't change that. That might be it. Might not be it. I don't have to do this if I'm not changing the colors. Okay, no, it's not with changing the colors. All right. So with C current to zero fail. So after it returns fail, it should go on. So 
it's probably this maybe the thing after seek current goes to zero. I try to seek a hundred that doesn't even work within seek that could be the issue. I don't know what the issues are anymore. I have too many of them. I know I'll probably have to like bisect this and do you know breakpoints and stuff to try to find this. So I don't want to waste your time, but I will try to find the issue to this and I can get back when I do find the issue and fix it. Hopefully I find the issue and fix it. <laughs> but it's definitely on a seek current call. Which should just add an offset to the OFT offset. I don't see why that would be an issue. Unless one of these have weird values after I'm setting this this stuff or something, but uh, yeah. It's probably something obvious, but I'm going to go and debug this and I'll be back if I find the issue. So <laughs> thanks for watching so far. All right, I found some issues, of course, because I'm uh, not smart. Let me put this here because I'll look at it later. I have a couple issues with seeking that it's not updating values, but let me show you what I have right now. I did find the issue. It's very obvious. I don't know how to do size of arrays, and I forgot if it was getting the size of a pointer or the whole array because it knows the size of the whole array. And Anyway, if I do run tests, I also fix the colors here. That's what it's supposed to look like. So when it can't seek current to zero, seek is staying at 100. So I'm not updating the offset in the file correctly after doing, I think, this to this. That doesn't, you know, go correctly there. Uh, or something that doesn't like set the offset back to zero or something. But anyway, for my issues here, I need to learn how to do size of arrays since it knows the size at compile time. I did put a two in there, but this should still work without it. Um, since it knows it at compile time, of course I have to do size of the whole array divided by size of one of the array's elements since they'll all be the same size. So just size of zero would be fine because we're guaranteed to have at least one of those, I think, for it being a pointer and we filled it out. All right, that gets the actual number of tests, which is two. Otherwise, before, I could have tested by printing it out. It's probably some big value, because it was, I don't know, whatever the whole array size was. It, it didn't work, and that caused some page faults, as you saw. I also looked back, and I do have percent %x for hex values for printf, and it works with both x1b and 033, which I thought it would. So let me get that. Get rid of that as well, and that's there. Okay, the other thing was I was not actually setting the colors within the terminal. <laughs> so where I'm actually drawing the colors, I am drawing them with user graphics info, uh, dereference to get the foreground background color. So, but I wasn't setting the colors, even though I set them internally to this file, because they are, yeah, because they're static here. So they'll be updated. The foreground and background, those are not within the, the graphics info struct. Those are outside of it. So I do have to actually set those <laughs> after I go through and get the colors. So that's all I'm doing there, and that does update it. So, okay, I do have issues. I didn't read where it was. <laughs> B2. I do have issues with setting the offsets and things. When I set to 100, it sets it to 100. And then if I set to negative 100, it doesn't change the offset. Really, I should set the offset to zero and not keep it at 100. That's my issue. Yes, set it to zero, but also error because they tried to seek before to the start of the file. All right, prevent further errors. Just go to the start. <laughs> then seek current should, you know, maybe be fixed now. We'll see. We'll seek. Ah. All right, if I go back here. Since I got the intermediate value here, let's just see what happens now. Run test. Hey, it still fails. Could not seek current to zero. Okay, well, I'll still have to figure out what the issue is because it's not updating past 100. Oh, well. <laughs> this has gone over an hour now, probably, so if I don't find it fast, I'll probably just leave it to the next one and give myself a day or two of rest to uh, find the actual issue. That would probably be good. Could not seek current to zero. So it should be zero because I'm seeking from zero. Actually, it should just be whatever the current value is for the offset, really. How do I determine that? I don't know. This should set it to zero, though, from here. 
So it really should be zero and not 100. I mean, it did just check that. Right, seek set. If we send a negative 100, it should set the offset to zero. It should set the OFT offset, not the other offset. I, I don't read what I'm doing. Why would I read? Like, you know, I read so much every day. Hey, look at that. You know, once you fix your bugs, you fix your bugs. And now I have joined the 21st century of test-driven development. I wrote a failing test. I fixed it. I wrote a passing test. That's, that's how that works, doesn't it? I'm getting sassy, which means I need to go to sleep. So, because I get weird when I get tired. We have passing tests. We've joined the test-driven development cult of personality movement. Let's see if this works with our original condition here and see what we're doing. We'll add a note for that weird discrepancy there. Hey, okay, we tested seek. All right, I will go on to do... Well, we can't read if we don't have any data in a file, right? So, yeah. <laughs> I'll go on to do uh, some write syscalls. I do currently have a write syscall, but it just checks if you send in an FD of one and writes to my current terminal thing. So I'll try to put in more of an implementation for write to different files according to a file descriptor from open, um, which finds it within the file system in the open file table, I think, or it creates it if it's not there. So we should test on opening current files, but I'll probably just do a, <laughs> to not mess with the binary OS system level files, I'll probably just make a new one with open, like I have been doing for these tests, and try to write some basic test data to that, just a string or something, and then we'll try and do, a, you know, reading and seeking for that, so with more test cases and stuff, because I want to get better at testing for work, my actual work as well. I'm getting more into testing, so this kind of helps with that. But anyway, I hope this was somewhat enjoyable. I'm trying to have more energy and stuff. It's a little forced, so hopefully you can't tell too much, but I'm not the most energetic person, <laughs> and I'm trying to not, I'm not the most emotional, inflective person either, and I'm trying to improve on those fronts, regardless if I have enough sleep or not. Uh, but yeah. I also added file memory cleanup, which I didn't say. <laughs> you want to close the file so you don't get memory leaks. But I'll try to do some basic write syscall enhancements <laughs> to actually make it work on the next video and add more tests and stuff. So hope you enjoy that. Let me check right quick if I have a memory leak so I know what to work on <laughs> for the, uh, the next episode, if we do or not. So we have this. And... It does make one extra block, that is true, from doing open for the first time, but after that, and doing printf or whatever for the first time, it does use a block. But other than that, that's not really a leak, that's just implementation details. It works, okay. Hope you enjoyed. I appreciate people watching, really do. And I guess I'll try and see you on the next one. So, cheers.